Oh, hey, YouTube, what is really good? My name is Invivid Color, coach of the South Texas Stable Eyes, and this is going to be your week four battle for the APA. We're doing it, Little Cup, this season, and we've just uh, jamming all the cute mons together in an arena to see who, uh, who comes out on top. This week, we are going up against Tyler, aka Deathly Am I, or Deathly I Am. I'm not entirely sure what order the last two words are. Uh, but either way, I think the name's really dope, Tyler, if you're watching this or if you see this. Um, Tyler is the coach of the Seattle Drizzlers, and he has a, uh, a Sun team, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Let's shrink here and see what he brought. Um, looks like Ralts, which... Okay, so he has the Sun core in Vulpix Bellsprout. He has Houndour, uh, Ball Toy Yen Mask, and he has the Fairy option, which is a little bit upsetting. Um, this week, I'm going to bring the Elekid... The Spinarak, the Pancham, the Jangmo. Oh, because I think it has a good matchup. It's going to be Jangmo's first time out here. Uh, the Drifloon and the Kabuto. I I don't really have time to talk about the sets here. We kind of... I had introed earlier, but then some stuff happened, so we had to recap, and then I just kind of rushed into this intro, if you can't tell. Um, we're currently 1 and 2 in the APA, which isn't great. Hopefully, we can even that out. Um, let's see. What does his lead look like? If his lead is Vulpix... If his lead is Vulpix, I think my best lead is Tide Pod, oddly enough, uh, which is the Kabuto. Just because I have the Focus Sash, and I could kill the Vulpix on turn one with a Rock Slide. That's if his lead is Vulpix. I think that's probably worth. I think it's probably worth. Uh, but if he goes for Willow's turn one, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, Ball Toy sets up rocks and spins. Okay. I think the lead here... Okay, so I, I think Kabuto is maybe not the safest lead. I'm actually going to lead with my Pancham because it doesn't look like he has a good check to it. And uh, we're going to go from there. I think Pancham is probably the correct lead here. Let's go ahead and uh, pull up some calcs. We've already said our good games, uh, you know, or good luck, have fun, etc., etc. Deathly, you're going to time, Bubba. Did he, did he even pick anything? Yeah, okay, so he he got in. I was I was concerned for a second that he just like actually didn't pick anything. Okay, cool. I don't know what happens when you don't pick actual anything in these battles. Um, yeah, so the last time my opponent had weather, I actually, I think, over-prepared for it. So this is the worst actual lead for me. <laughs> the last time my opponent had weather, I just didn't prepare for it. And I think that ended up hurting me. So Ralts now has Iron Fist, which I don't think is super relevant. Uh, what can Ralts trace? Ralts stats are really bad. And I know, like, for a fact, like, for an actual fact, that I can live whatever this thing wants to do to me. Like, that's, I, I mean, I, I think that's almost like a given. Um, yeah, I don't know what this thing's going to do. I don't, I don't have a set for it or anything. I'm just going to, like, import a set real quick. So I can have a rough gauge of damage, I guess. Because otherwise, I'm just kind of like going blind here. All right, so Ralts, let's look at this custom set. Uh, let's go ahead and give it Moonblast, which I think is the most effective move it would have, which would do about 50% to me. I've got 53 seconds. Um, Thunder Punch halves it, Parting Shot. So I guess we just switch here. Switching seems like the most optimal line. And I can just go out into uh, Spinarak here, I think. Um, Spinarak should be able to take a Psychic pretty cleanly. If it sets up Trick Room, that's not good for me, right? Psychic. All right. Uh, let's see how much this does. My guess is I would have not said that much, to be honest with you. I would have said it did under half if I had to guess. Well, that's not great. Uh, what's Ralt's speed? Base speed eight. My spinner axe base speed is nine. So if this thing's invested, it outspeeds and kills, which is not great. It's not really where I want to be. All right, I probably shouldn't have switched in. I probably just should have clicked parting shot realistically. Um. Okay. Let's see. How much does a psychic do to Elekid? Uh, uh, wait, real quick. Let's use that gauge. It did 14 to me. All right, so let's use the psychic damage. Uh, so, oh, yeah, that would be that would be a high roll if it was uninvested in special attack. If it was invested, that would be... Okay, so it's not invested. At least not fully invested in special attack. Um, which makes me think it's probably bulky. 
This is a hard spot to be in. All right, let's see how much we have a Psychic doing to Drifloon. Uh, it looks like Drifloon could take all these attacks, so I think it's a pretty free switch here. I guess I shouldn't have switched in knowing that Psychic could be the move instead of Moonblast. Um, I probably just shouldn't have switched in in that spot. Magic Coat. Oh, good play. Not bad. All right, so we should be able to set up a substitute here pretty freely is my guess. And then once we are itemless, I think an acrobatics will two hit. Psychic. So this should do about 30. It's going to break some. I would guess. I think we can actually probably just take the next psychic. Like, just let that happen. I probably just should have let that psychic happen. Well, no. All right, so we'll take this psychic and go for a knockoff. See what item we're getting here. And then the turn after this, I think Acrobatics will kill. So it was a Focus Sash. This is a Focus Sash lead. All right, good set. So we should eat this pretty clean. Uh, this will take us back up to full. Uh, just under full? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And now our speed, we're actually just faster than I think at everything. And I think an Acrobatics will kill from this range if I have zero item. Uh, if I have no item, yeah, the acrobatics is like a for it's like surefire. The Yanma here is a dope switch because it sort of forces me into this position where I, uh, I kind of have to switch out, which is not the best because if I hit the Yanma, well, I guess not. I could probably two hit it with knockoff and acro would be my guess. I don't really want to take a will list though. Not Yanma, Yan mask. Yanma's banned in this format. How do you spell Yan Mask? Ya Mask. Whatever. Uh, okay, I don't have a set for that either. I should have. I always try to like import sets before we start uh, jamming games. All right, this seems like an odd switch. I guess we go for Will Wisp here. Let's go for Will Wisp here, and that would be good. Let's see. In the sun. All right, let's check. A we have our Vulpix set pulled up. All right, I don't have to calc the Ya Mask set right yet. Uh, so if this is like a standard set that doesn't have much HP investment or defense investment, we have a chance to Oko here. And I think that Vulpix can almost, well, wait. Okay, so Fire Blast actually has a chance to Oko. It has a 37.5% chance to Oko. It's, well, it's higher than that because I'm not at full health, which is not great. Okay, cool. Not great. Not great. Um, I think I just click sub here. You can just click sub and see what happens. See what uh, Deathly wants to do here. Oh, well, this is good for me. I would imagine that this is very good for me since I am now subbed up in front of this thing. What is it doing? Oh, it uses what Z hypnosis. Oh, oh, it boosted its speed. I think I still outspeed though. And I'm going to go for acro now. Knowing that, because now I know I can kill this thing. Because we dodged the hypnosis. Oof, that was just like an unfortunate turn of events for him. Because if the if I hadn't subbed there and I'd done actually anything else, I think this Vulpix might have been able to take us down. But now we can definitely two shot it with acro, and we outspeed. I feel like, I mean, the sub was scouting here, and I think it could have gone pretty poorly for me had he just gone for fire blast. Um, but under this scenario where I outspeed with it, like this thing at plus one, I outspeed no matter what because of my unburden boost. Um, it just ended up not being great for Deathly there. Okay, so that's two mons down, right? I think Drifloon's actually, Drifloon's pulling some weight this game for sure. Um, this might be the, I always try and use one of the sets that's like a status and hex set because I think it's cute, but it's probably not the best. Okay, so here I'm actually in an interesting position um, because I think Houndour, I think Houndour gets Pursuit. Like, we're definitely dying to a dark, a dark pulse here. Does Houndour get Pursuit? Because if so, um, that could really hamper my fun. <laughs> uh, it does. Okay, so the Pursuit will kill. And how much does just Acro do? I'm just going to Acro here. I think that Drifloon's probably done enough. I think that Drifloon's probably done enough, and the Vulpix is gone, and we know he didn't have uh, Solar Rock or Sunny Rock or whatever. I'm just going to acro here. Um, I think this has to be the play. I guess if he'd had Sucker Punch, that this would have been a rough line. Oh, wow. Was that a crit? No. Oh, no. I, I have my calc up right here. Acro has... It was a 50-50 it was a roll, depending on investment. Yeah, Drifloon is... 
Drifloon's a monster. Drifloon is a monster when I, I think that this is one of the times where I just like actually acknowledge that Drifloon was good in a week. Um, I don't think Drifloon's ever been the best, but this week, like it just does so much um, because Bellsprout is, I think, his best Pokemon. Like, I think Bellsprout is his best Pokemon, probably in Sun. And oh, wow. I thought that I thought that was going to one shot at first. Ancient power. And see, like, I don't think this will kill. It might. It doesn't. And I really don't need to recycle yet. I can probably recycle on the Bell Sprout, would be my guess. I feel. I don't want to say, like, I feel scummy because this is just. I mean, I think Deathly probably had a really rough matchup this week, to be honest. Um, with the Drifloon. The Drifloon looked really good against most of his team. I'm kind of surprised the Mantike didn't come, but I mean, the Drifloon outspeeds the entire team. This is the one that I think probably he should have brought out a little bit earlier. Um, cause now I'm in a position, uh, now I'm in a position where I think it's probably best. I mean, I'm not going to lie. My differential right now is not great. My differential is not great. So I think I'm probably in a position where I want to preserve that. Uh, let's see. So I have a rough Yamas set up here now. Uh, knockoff's not going to kill it. And we're going to get nerfed by Mummy pretty hard. We also died to Hex here. But I think it's probably fine just to get the damage off. I don't think I need to preserve a 6-0 this week. I don't think that that's like super duper necessary. I think we can just go for the knockoff, get the damage. Oh, Culberberry? Not even bad. That means this is going to do actually nothing. And now we're slow boys. Um, I'm assuming he's just going to like kill me with like Shadow Ball, right? Yeah. So I could have gone and I could have tried to preserve the 6-0 there. Um, it just didn't seem like... I don't know. I, I, I don't think I needed to do that because it would have been playing around a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, I think here I can just probably freely go out into Elekid and clean up. That's my guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I'm pretty sure we can freely go into Elekid and clean up here. Depending on sets, obviously. Uh, but I'm pr I'm also pretty sure this thing won't be able to Oko me. So let's just go for the Thunderbolt. And then we have Psychic for the Bellsprout. And spread the damage around a little bit. Spread my kills around. It's probably not great for, uh, what's that? The Your MVP slots? I think Magby had a good matchup this week, now that I'm thinking about it. Magby probably had a pretty good matchup this week. Uh, yeah, that kills. I think that was maybe a roll. It looks like Thunderbolt to a typical set. I, I mean, I just say typical. I just kind of look up the sets on Smogon for the Pokemon that don't already have a basic set in. And then I tweak them when I need to. Um, so it looks like Thunderbolt to like the typical, like whatever sets on Smogon, which is like a bulky set, does 61 to 80%. And he definitely was higher than 61, but he wasn't. He was lower than 80 for sure. All right, so I think Psychic just Oko's this thing, if I'm not mistaken. Unless there's, uh, I, I don't think any any set of Bellsprout lives a Psychic. That's one thing that I tried to make sure of. So like Focus Sash would live here, but I think everything else just drops. Oh wow, what is this, a bulky Bellsprout? Clear Smog. That's interesting tech. I wonder if that was for the bell sprouts or just for like a setup. I think he's just showing tech here. Um, they don't have any stat changes. I feel I feel like kind of bad that Drifloon did that much. I mean, I complain from week to week when Drifloon doesn't do enough. Um, but I feel like Drifloon just overperformed this match. Like, I think I just kind of like switched, in, switched into Drifloon at one point and we ran away with it. I don't know, man. Um, good game, get good game, definitely for sure. I I feel like I feel like Drifloon was just really getting at your team this week. I don't know. You know, the more I play Drifloon, the more I feel kind of scummy about it. Like when I do good with it, which is not most weeks. So I guess I shouldn't feel too bad. I feel like it evens out because most weeks I feel like I just switched in and it dies. Um, yeah, uh, good game, definitely. Um, if, what do we? How do we even talk about this one? Um, it's not, I, I just feel like it's hard to talk about games in a positive fashion, um, from either side when 
it's kind of like a one-sided match like that. Um, I think the, I think 100% the, the turn that made the biggest difference was just subbing in front of the Vulpix, which I think was not the highest percentile play I could have made, to be fair. Um, I think the highest percentile play was probably switching out in the face of the Vulpix, but I was never ever predicting uh, Z Hypnosis Vulpix. So I feel like ooh, we kind of lucked out on that end that that was the set and it wasn't just sort of like a typical sunset. I actually really like the tech because it takes Vulpix, which is normally just the weather setter and turns Vulpix into the weather sweeper because you can get that boost in speed. Now all of a sudden your fire blasts are doing ridiculous damage. I'm sure he had solar beam maybe to deal with uh, to deal with any bulky water types. So I don't know. I feel like that was the play that really decided the game because once I clicked sub, I just I could acrobatics twice, which was nuts because then acro just did infinity damage to the rest of his team. Which is, I guess, something that I probably should calc more often because I'm pretty often running like the special Drifloon sets and maybe I should just be running the acro set because acrobatic spam seems nuts and I actively want to be losing my item. I don't know. Maybe this is something to... Maybe this is like opening my eyes to how good Drifloon could actually be. You could probably actually run it mixed too. Like I, I contemplated running acro Shadow Ball for a really, really long time, but I settled on acro knock because... A, I was completely walled by his Helioptile if I ran Acro Shadow Ball. Like, I actually just couldn't touch it and I would get O-Code by it. So I ended up Acro Knock. Um, I don't know. Great game, Deathly. If you want to check out his side, the link will be in the description down below. I'm done talking about this. I'm just trying to analyze it because, uh, I don't know. It, to me, it makes sense because those matches that are pretty one-sided sometimes end up kind of feel bad. And I don't want to, like, ask people to interview them after battles like Pokegame does. But when he interviewed me for his battle, which, by the way, if you haven't watched it, um, I lost to him last week. It was like a 3-0 and then he interviewed me after and it was really cool because I was maybe kind of salty at the end of the battle and then all of that was eased over. So I'm trying to kind of do that by just, I guess, talking about what happened in this matchup. I think the team Deathly brought is really interesting. Um, I, and by, I don't mean interesting and like it was cute or it was bad. I mean, it was good. I think that the tech on Vulpix was dope. I think that the clear smog on Bellsprout is probably like, that's probably... <laughs> I don't know, it's sneaky good, you know what I mean? Because it's stab already, so it's going to hit hard on some things. Um, like, I have uh, Morlo. if you haven't seen my team, which I think I still haven't uploaded the draft breakdown as of the time of recording this. Uh, but yeah, like, I have Morlo. I'm pretty sure Clear Smog from a Bell Sprout would probably Oko Morlo unless I was, like, super, 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 super duper uh, defensively invested. And it also has the potential to sort of, like, nerf any sweepers. Like, one of my strategies this week was to get in my Jang Mo'o and set up a Dragon Dance. Um, if you are faster than me in the sun and you get to reset my stats, that seems really dope. I don't know. Um, anyways, great game. Check out Deathly for sure. Great content creator. Super chill guy. Um, was really nice in scheduling. We had to reschedule a couple times and he's just been super understanding. Um, other than that, if you're new here, you should probably subscribe because uh, you were just doing lots of fun stuff. I'm back to being a teacher again, which isn't the funnest, but uh, it shouldn't affect my league uploads. And I want to do I want to do more with this channel than just upload league content. But I always say that and then I never do it. I will get around to it eventually. Um, so you should subscribe if you're new. You should like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, you should also leave me a comment down below. You can tell me that I am trash at this game and I will probably still heart your comment. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. You know, like the video, subscribe, talk to me in the comments. section. follow my socials. They're down in the description. Uh, go check out Deathly's channel. I'll link his Twitch too because I think it's where he spends the bulk of his time. And uh, yeah, we're kind of done here. I'm I'm in vivid color. I'm the coach of the South Texas Stabilize. We're now two and two, which means we have legs in the APA. Uh, thank you. It means the absolute most having you here. I'm going to sign off now. Love you. Got to go. It's, I'm kind of not going to leave. Bye. Tell me so